today the set built-in function in Python 3. So let's start with a look at the docs. Set takes one argument, which must be an iterable, and it will return a new set object. I'll note that sets are mutable, while the elements inside a set, the iterables, must be immutable. So let's learn how to instantiate sets. If we wanted to use the curly brackets, uh, you'll notice that the type is going to be a dictionary. So if you want to instantiate using the curly bracket syntax, you have to actually uh, fill it with values. And then when you check the type, it is in fact a set. So the only way to create an empty set is to use the set function. So you could do a equals set. And then when we run that, our type is a set and we have an empty set. So what values can we put in a set? Uh, well, we can put in numbers, we can put in strings, basically any immutable type. And if you try to add something that's mutable, like a list, you're going to get this unhashable type error. So keep in mind that only immutable objects can be put inside of a set. So what can we use the set function for? What can we wrap set around in a useful way? Well, let's say we had a list where it's not all unique values. We had a whole bunch of threes here, right? And we wanted to create a new list with only unique values. Well, you could wrap set around A, and we get only the unique values one, two, and three. And then if you just wanted to make that back into a list, just wrap list around that, and we have a new list of only unique values due to the set function. And of course, this works not just for numbers, but let's say we had another list of names or something. So we had uh, Joe in here, um, and we had Joe again, and we had uh, James. So that's our list, some names, and we could wrap set around B, and now we just have Joe and James. We have those unique values. Another thing I want to show you is that sets are mutable. So let's say we had a little set here that we call A. We can do something like a.add4. And now we have, uh, we have added that number four to our set. And we could do a.remove1. And we've removed values from our set. So sets are mutable. You can play around with it a little bit. And uh, the alternative, if you wanted an immutable set, you would use uh, frozen sets. So you could do frozen set A. And here we have a frozen set. Uh, maybe we'd assign that to something. So B equals frozen set A. So here's B. If we wanted to do B dot add, then we're not going to be able to do that. Frozen set is immutable. So just note that you have two options, both mutable and immutable, uh, for creating sets. Oh, and I guess in the sets I created before, I only did numbers and strings, but keep in mind that other types that you can add here include none and uh, tuples. So we could add a little one, two, three tuple in here. So there's, there's more types, not just numbers and strings, um, any immutable type. Oh, and one more thing worth mentioning is that sets are unordered. So let's say we wrap set around a list like one, two, eight, you might expect it to keep that order, uh, but the outcome is 812. And so sets are unordered. Do not expect it to keep the index and just keep an eye out for that. One last thing I want to show you is that the set function actually plays pretty nice with other built in functions. So say we throw range in here, we can create a new set. And that same syntax would not have worked if we just used the bracket syntax. Um, so Set plays pretty nice with other built-in functions. It'll make it easier to write more complicated code when you're using the set function rather than simply the brackets. Thanks for watching.